Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and the other day I released a video discussing the developer of Grimoire, Heralds of the Winged Exemplar, in relation to the threats that developer made against myself, the Reddit platform, a Reddit user that posted on that platform, and that developer had also doxed one of my channel's moderators. Now, since that video went live, the developer himself and a couple of his cohorts from the website RPG Codex have been very busy in the comments section of that video. Unsurprisingly, the vast majority of the developer's statements are no longer there, as he has had deleted them himself while I was asleep. However, from the first posting of his that he made, I could tell that the vast majority of these posts would not survive even 24 hours, and so I made certain to save screen captures of all of the varying ones that I came across. Of course, he was either not able to or forgot to remove the nearly 120 copy-pasted comments that he made on the video that I don't need to save, owing to the fact that I doubt he can see them to remove them. But through all of the shall we say, colorful statements made by the developer, he has thoroughly failed to grasp the point of what I showed in my previous video, and he seems to also fail to comprehend defamation law and international law as well at even a basic level. So I thought it would be a bit of a fun little thought exercise to go through all of the pertinent points, not just the one single point that the developer wanted to make, but let's start off with that one. Actually, let's concentrate on that one. Now, he stated well over 100 times that this is in regards to the statement made by Kuros360, specifically the portion where Kuros stated, quote, he then stole the leftover code for their last game in date and repurposed it to make it look as his own. The developer then reported this posting citing Reddit rules 2 and 6, rule 2 being abusive content and personal attacks towards a person or a group of people, and rule 6, derogatory terms designed to serve no other purpose than to verbally attack another person. And the other main point of contention this developer has are that I chose to refuse their complaint and have left the posting as is, and that I also shared this information with my YouTube channel via my previous video. But in all of this, the developer has failed to realize some key facts regarding what it is that he's upset about. First, let's go through his message to me for the key facts. First, he did state in his own message, quote, this is the first step of bringing Reddit to court. Those are his own words and a definitive statement that he desires legal action against Reddit over this user's post. Second, he also stated, quote, You've had it up for a year and have not taken this post down. It's time to remove this post or speak with a lawyer. In that statement, he used the word you in a direct message sent only to me, meaning in no uncertain terms that if I did not comply with his demands, then he would seek legal action against me. A third, the developer stated, quote, I guarantee you if I knew the identity of the poster, he would get served with a defamation suit. There is a measurable impact on my successful commercial product, and it is absolutely slanderous. Again, meaning he intends to sue the Reddit poster in question, and you can see all of this on your screen now. It is verifiable fact, something this developer doesn't seem to be able to grasp, hence this video explaining things. So, all of this focuses on the concept of defamation. Slander. Actually, in this instance, it would be liable to call it by what it is because legalese and all that. Now, this is where things might get a little bit difficult to follow, so I'll try to keep things as simple as possible. Now, there is a possibility, I'm not sure, but I'm guessing, that the developer resides in Australia. The reason for this is when the developer was making one of his threats against me, he stated any airport in Australia or the US. Oddly specific, but I took it to mean either he could come to me or I could go to him. It's pretty readily apparent that I'm a US citizen living in the US, which would mean that the developer is an Aussie, or at least living there. But Reddit is a US-based company, as is YouTube, as is my channel, and that's important because very different defamation laws exist between the two countries, so let's take a look at the differences here. First, let's look at Australian defamation law. Now, Australian defamation law is much more strict than the US laws, so I went and did a little research, and here's what Australian law provides as examples of defamation. If it was published to a third person, i.e. to at least one person other than the plaintiff, person entity defamed, identify as the plaintiff for example, by name or by a reference to a small group of people, etc., and contains a defamatory statement or imputation, whether intentionally published or not. And when you take that into consideration, Kuros 360's statement could be seen to be defamatory. It was published to a third person or entity other than the plaintiff, in other words, the developer. It is readily apparent that Kuros was referring to him specifically, and if the statement were false, then it would be a defamatory statement. So in all, 
If we knew nothing else, the statement would have been defamatory and I would be forced to issue a retraction and take this post down off of Reddit. But the law is never that simple. Now, in regards to Australian law, in 2006, certain amendments were made to Australian defamation laws that were enacted by all six states. And one of those changes were a reduction of the time limit for bringing a defamation action from six years to one year. So had this post been made more than one year ago, there's no actionable defamation. There is a possibility that a judge would allow for up to three years for any lawsuit filing, but that would naturally be dependent on the developer actually filing a lawsuit and the judge then allowing a special circumstance. Now, taking that into consideration, as we can see here, Kiros 360's posting was made Sunday, July 9th, 2017 at 4.02 p.m. UTC, which would mean that it has been well past that one-year point and any lawsuit would require a special allowance from an Australian judge. Now, as that is the case, then according to Australian law, the developer doesn't have a pot to piss in, so to speak, but that doesn't mean we're done yet. Next, we also have to look at U.S. defamation laws as well for reasons that will become clear in just a moment. Now, U.S. defamation laws hold stipulations regarding public figures. The reason for this is the U.S. government places a priority on the population being able to speak their minds when it comes to government officials as well as public figures or people in the public eye. These stipulations dictate that the defamatory statement must also be malicious, and in this circumstance, the onus of proof is actually on the public figure. Actual malice is defined as when the person making the defamatory statement knew the statement was untrue at the time the statement was made, or had reckless disregard for whether it is true or false, meaning the public figure must prove that the person making the defamatory statement knew it was false at the time they said it. But then there's also the two questions to follow up off of the back of this. Does the developer qualify as a public figure, and why is this important? So, being a game developer in and of itself does not make a person a public figure. However, this particular game developer has listed his own name as the developer of the game, making his name a brand. Also, as there has been public news scrutiny in the past surrounding the developer in relation to his game, its 20-year development cycle, and its three Indiegogo fundraising campaigns, the developer can be considered an involuntary public figure, which, according to U.S. law, no differentiation is made between an involuntary public figure and a voluntary one for the purposes of defamation and slander. This means that the answer to our first question is that yes, the developer can be considered to be a public figure. Then we have the important question, why is that important? Well, you see, international law is important as we do not live in a single unified world government. Certain jurisdictions must be ascertained as to which country's laws apply. This is especially important when you're dealing with the internet. A Kelly Warner Law states the following. In order to file a defamation lawsuit in another country, you must be able to prove some connection to the country. Were the defamatory statements published in the country? Did the material attract an unusual amount of attention in that country? In other words, you can't just pick a super plaintiff-friendly jurisdiction. The incident under review must have a suitable connection to the jurisdiction in which a case is filed. You see, it's important to know and to remember where the defamation occurred. The developer resides in Australia, from what I've been given to understand, but does that mean that Australian law applies? Now, as I stated before, Reddit is a US-based company. Their home offices are in California. I am also a US citizen that lives and works in the US. This means that my subreddit is also US-based and runs on US servers. That means that the alleged defamation made by Kiros 360, as the developer is calling it defamation, was made on what amounts to US soil. That means that Australian law would not apply here, and if the developer wanted to sue Reddit, Kuros360, and myself, as he's clearly stated, it would have to be filed in a U.S. court under U.S. jurisdiction, and U.S. law would apply. And by that token, as we can reasonably assume the developer can be considered a public figure, he must prove that when Kuros360 wrote his post on my subreddit over one year ago, that he knew that his statement was false or engaged in a reckless disregard as to whether it was true true or false, and when we look at the statement there, there's nothing there that would indicate this person was deliberately perpetuating a lie. It would seem that Kuros 360 had reason to believe the information they were relating was, in fact, the truth, which, if that is the case, then no defamation actually occurred. And that, dear viewer, in a nutshell, was why I refused the developer's very vitriolic request to pull the post. That, and in the process of his seemingly rabies-induced rantings, he doxed my moderator, which is a violation of Reddit rules and is just, in general, bad form. 
But also, there seems to be some confusion as to why I created the video to begin with and why I discussed the game's 20-year development cycle and three separate Indiegogo campaigns. Most of that confusion is coming from the developer himself and is being deliberately obtuse, but also from his more devout followers and a large subset of the developer fans over at RPG Codex that engaged in a mass downvote on that video. So let me be clear in no uncertain terms. The purpose for the video was not to discuss the developer's complaint about what he incorrectly believed to be defamation and slander, but it was to discuss his doxing my moderator, and it was to discuss his resorting to making legal threats in an effort to bully me and my moderator in order to get his way. I also discussed the developer's insane 20 years spent on this game and his multiple broken release date promises that number in the double digits because it very much speaks to his character and presence of mind. You see, when you spend so much time working on something as the developer has with his eyesore of a game, their sense of self-worth and even their very life purpose can become inextricably tied to that thing. And as a result, any such criticism of his product would and has resulted in a petulant, childlike lashing out. He's become utterly incapable of handling legitimate criticism and this pattern of behavior is the result. When you look at the Steam storefront, there are a larger than zero number of user reviews that the developer dismissed as quote-unquote hearsay, and he has openly dismissed and railed against any form of legitimate critique. His actions are those of a child. Throw in a temper tantrum because he isn't getting his way, and within his tantrums in my comment section, he's actually managed to commit libel himself. You see, I'm also a public figure due to my capacity as a YouTuber. As such, I must also prove actual malice or a wanton disregard for the truth. Now, in his ramblings, the developer has cast aspersions on my gender, my intellect, my age even, somehow thinking I'm a millennial, and everything else under the sun. He's also implied physical threats in this statement here, and again in this one here. And I'll just cycle through a fair number of the statements he's made, which I collected specifically because I knew he'd be too cowardly himself to keep those statements up, but also because they all speak very much to intent. You see, when you're dealing with someone so completely vitriolic and petty, it paints a very clear picture of malice and malicious intent when it comes to the statements he is making. Also, as I am a US-based YouTuber and YouTube itself is a US-based company, that means that US law applies here, which is a shame. I'd actually love to be able to file a lawsuit against this person in Australia as it would actually be far easier to sue him for defamation and slander. However, even though this is technically occurring on US digital soil, I would have a very strong case myself to file a lawsuit assuming I possess the funds to be able to file that lawsuit. Regardless as to whether I can or will follow that course of action, this developer and his continued actions have earned him a permanent slot in the not-so-hallowed halls of the dirty developers, putting him right up there alongside Digital Homicide, Dentola Studios, Dallas Game, Andrew Watts, Berdiev, and Silicon Echo. And as always, please do let me know what you think about all of this down in the comments below. I'm sure the Grimoire developer will show up to begin another tirade himself, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. Well, thank you so much for watching. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sin Alpha, and I'll see you next time.